It's so interesting that something you think you know, you keep thinking you know it until you try to do it and you find out that you're not able to do it. That is how it is with creating a MySQL database in Workbench. So let's go ahead to do it and you find out that it's really not as easy as you think. If you have not installed MySQL, please download MySQL. So you can actually download MySQL. You can download it for free. I'm not going to download it. I'm just going to show you how to download it. So go to MySQL website, go to the MySQL community server, and then go down and download the installer, right? Good. So if you download, just go ahead to install it. And right now I'm going to just open it. If you go down to MySQL, now if you install MySQL server, it's going to give you a GUI application called MySQL Workbench. And that is what we are going to be using to work, to create database. Again, before I continue, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed, so click on the subscribe button below this video so that you kind of motivate me to keep making these lessons. And if you have any question at all, any challenge, let me know in the comment box below and I'm going to respond to you. So just click on the subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel. And then let me know if you have any recommendation. Okay, so if you open MySQL Workbench, this is how it will open. What nice do you do at this point? Now, if you set up MySQL Workbench or MySQL Server, you have Workbench and that is fine. So you have this local instance, uh, now we have this one, local instance, WordPress. I created this a different instance. You can create as many instances as, as you want. So we are going to go to local instance, click on it, and it's going to ask you for the password. When you install MySQL, you, put, you have to configure a password. So for me, I use the same password called root. So the question now is, here, here is a confusing thing. If you go to all this menu, database, query, you never will see create new database. Never you will not see create new database. And that is the confusion. You can actually spend a whole lot of time here looking for how to create a database, but you'll never find how to create a database. It all happens that in MySQL, a database is called a schema. And that is a confusion because in, in MSSQL, a database and a schema are two different things. Schemas are objects on the databases that holds other objects. So we have database, we have schema, we have tables and other objects. But in MySQL, we have a database which is the same as a schema. So if you want to create a database, you have to create a schema. And that is a catch. But it doesn't end there. Let's go ahead to go to uh, look for first you want to see if, is there some list of databases available that is also something that can be confusing so go to schemas here see administration here go to the schemas tab and you see a number of schemas and it's actually the databases in the system I'll create a new database just right click and say create schema that is the how that is the easy way to do it and Let's call this schema or this database users db as it is going to hold a list of users. So in this user database, we are going to be creating tables uh, called uh, users or student or whatever we call it. So I'm, say, I'm going to say OK and say apply. So at this point, we have a new database has been created. Now in MySQL Workbench, the databases are given names of lowercase or true. So if you come here, you can see that you can drop down, expand this, and you can see tables, and now there are no tables created there. So you can just right click and now say create table. Now let's create a table with three columns, uh, and let's name this table student. student. So now we have a custom of naming tables with plural, let's say students, or TBL students. But if you're a Java programmer or if you're a programmer uh, at this time, 2019, you should be doing object relational mapping. And it's easy to name databases with the same names as the classes in your application. That means that you are going to be given database objects, I mean database objects like tables, the same name as you name your classes that maps to this table. So you have a class called students in your application you also have a database table called students in, in singular form. 
So let's adopt that. And at this point, I'm going to, we have ID and this has to be integer and we have first name and we have last name. Okay, so now I'm going to uncheck this. So I'm going to show you one more thing because there is something else that is a bit confusing. So now I've created a table with three columns with a primary key ID, which is integer. I'm going to set it to auto increment. AI means auto increment, as you can see right here, okay? Now, after defining the columns, go ahead to say apply and say okay and say apply so you say there was zero the following task uh it says um present there was zero uh, incorrect table definition okay so we have okay i'm going to just take all this as well take all this auto increment and just apply and say apply okay so having created this table you can see expanding here you can see student how do we put in some data into this table? If you right click, you say select, and you see that you are not able to put in any data into this table. That is also another problem. I'll show you how to solve it right now. <coughs> Sorry for that. It happens that before you can edit a table, a table data, you need to have a primary key in that table. I purposely did not select the primary key. And I also purposely and I did it this way so that I can show you how to modify a table. Now to modify this table, just right click on the table and just go to go to alter table. If you go to alter table, it opens the same table definition uh, window where you created the table and just select primary key. And yeah, primary key and just say apply and just say okay. So at this point, we'll be able to edit this table. So if you right click on this table and select uh, 1000 rows, you can see that we can edit it. So let's say we start by adding ID of one and name is Kyneton. Okay, so we've added one and let's add another one too. Okay, so now we have two items added in this table. So that is how to create a database table in MySQL. And that is very important because MySQL is something that everybody should be able to use if you're a programmer by DBA. So at this point, if I, if I say apply, it's going to apply everything. Okay, so you can see it's generating the SQL statement on the fly. So if I go back here and say select 100 rows, you can see is select the, the, the content of the table. So this is how to create a database in MySQL Workbench. I'll now proceed to how to create stored procedures because if you drop down here, you can see views, you can see stored procedures and you can see functions. But before I do that, I'm going to first explain what these things are all about. So if you want to follow my lessons, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button below this video right now. Leave me a comment to let me know if you have any recommendations and feel free to like my video and also share it around. So we see in the next lesson. Thank you very much.